Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, sitting down for a recap of the Disney and Marvel Games Showcase. I hope all of you are doing fantastic. So if you missed this showcase, let me give you the too long didn't read. It was woefully inadequate. For everything that Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars have in the pipeline, this show was a complete missed opportunity, and they could have done much better. In fact, I'm very surprised in some instances that they did go forward with this showcase, given what they had to show was mostly mobile titles. But I wanted to go through it from top to bottom, to save you all some time and also offer my thoughts on what was shown here because it was not devoid of any good games. There were some good ones and one in particular amazing surprise. So we'll get into all of that, but a lot of this isn't great. One thing I will compliment the show for off the bat is the pacing. It seemed very self-aware that they didn't have to hang around and announce things and talk about them for a while. It was in and out for the most part, where I had to consider whether or not I had to do a showcase recap. It's 23, 25 minutes long. Not too bad, all things considered. But that's where the good stops for the most part. So if you're new here, you're into these types of showcase recaps, news, and information on games, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. Let's begin with the first game announced at the show. We're going to go in order with everything that was shown off at this showcase, Tron Identity. This is a mystery detective game coming from Mike Bithell, who was the developer of Thomas Was Alone and John Wick Hex, among many other games. So this is one that kind of set the stage of, oh, is this what we're to expect here? Because it was just CG. It was just a title card reveal. This is a thing we're doing. This is a thing we're working on. Cool, it exists. See you whenever. For me, I get flashbacks to the Tron level in Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> and that was my least favorite level because it was right before where everything popped off. But you're just like, man, I got to get through the Tron level first. Hey, shout out to all the Tron lovers. If you're hype, you're hype. No disrespect to you. Just Tron ain't my homie. So let's move on to the second one. This was a good surprise. And this is where I started to turn the corner a bit and think, all right, like maybe these are the type of games they have in their back pocket that they're going to pull out for this showcase and why they wanted to host one in general. Disney Illusion Island, a Nintendo Switch exclusive. I think this is a perfect fit. It looks to be a four-player side-scroller where you play as Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy. It's artistically beautiful. It looks like one of the animated television show episodes made into a game. Kind of got that old 1930s look, cuphead if you will. It's got the voice actors. It seems pretty great. And I think for the Switch, which is pretty appealing to a younger audience as a console, this all makes sense. And I was thinking heading into this show, if maybe we would see something like uh, a Marvel Ultimate Alliance 4, because the last one did come from Nintendo. And I remember thinking, oh, that's certainly a timed exclusive. This was before we were really starting to lock in these major brands into exclusivity deals. So I was thinking maybe we're going to see more of that, but Nintendo showed up in a different way here, which was awesome. It also may put a damper on the Nintendo Direct rumors because everyone's saying this one happening this month. I think there is a likely possibility of that given the plethora of leaks happening, but I also feel this would be one they would want to have on their own Direct. Maybe I'm wrong, but anyway, one of the better surprises here. And it didn't stop there. This is where I started to think, this might be a lit show right now. 20 minutes, we're three announcements deep. We got a new IP, okay, cool. We have a cool Switch exclusive, and then we see more of Midnight Suns. This was one of my most anticipated games of the year. Unfortunately, it got delayed to 2023. For those who don't know, it's a turn-based tactics game that comes from the developers of XCOM. Like you're, you're talking to the right person. Praxis Games is awesome. And they're making a Marvel game with some social elements too. Looks great. Then they dropped the shocker that it's coming out December 2nd this year on next-gen consoles and PC. That is an awesome surprise. My favorite surprise of the whole show. And we very rarely, but it's been twice this year, have seen games moved up in their release date. But if you have a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series console, or PC, you'll be able to play Midnight Suns this December. So pumped for this one. Immediately shot up my list as most anticipated games. I think it fills out the year. That feels overall kind of devoid of anything hype. And this is certainly one that is pushed its way to the top of my list and I cannot wait to play this one. Shout out to my co-host Cog. He was down bad about this delay, but fortunately it made its way back into 2022. From there, I got to be completely transparent, brutally honest, whatever you want to call it, all downhill from here. Mobile, 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 free to play, free to play, free to play. And some of these games actually on a conceptual level looked pretty cool, but once you see mobile, you just know what comes with that territory. So let's get it started. What they had next was Red Hulk in Marvel Strike Force, 
I used to play Marvel Strike Force a couple of years ago. It was like a little fad. Didn't spend any money on it. Grinded it for a bit, but just like every mobile gotcha game, you're just rolling for characters, draining your battery, repeating the missions. It's distracting. I've never found myself to be in love with these games. The only one I always say I liked was Tales of Crystoria. Why? It had a really good story. Unfortunately, it was killed in a mobile game, so it never saw the light of day, and it ended up getting shut down. But otherwise, yeah, I can't get behind these games, but there's an update for that. This was kind of cool, but I am not holding my breath. Marvel Snap. This is pretty much what I would say Marvel's Hearthstone. I wasn't aware of it until someone came in the stream and said, Hey, Matt, do you think this will be here? And they described it as such, and it looked exactly like that. I'm all about card games. I loved playing the Dragon Ball Super card game for years when it first came out. Unfortunately, the scene died around my local area when the pandemic hit. So it means that I can't play any card games right now except Magic the Gathering Arena. So I'm looking to still fill that void in my heart until maybe one day they make a DBS card game on digital devices uh but until then marvel snap is on my radar at least to a minor degree maybe as a little hey i'll try this out for a week see what it's all about that's coming to mobile and pc then we got some updates very quick updates kind of nothing updates on upcoming games like aliens dark descent we just saw it again and much like the trailer that we first saw earlier this summer the frame rate not looking too hot. It's another Aliens Horde game. It's got more tactics to it than I expected, which is nice given that Fireteam Elite came out pretty recently, and that was also a Horde-based Aliens game. But this one might catch the interest of some folks. For me, it looked more of the same of what we've seen from this franchise in video game format. And I just hope that they go back to the more horror elements of this franchise. I feel that's where people, especially with the new hunger for survival horror and horror games, I think it would do very well. There was an update on that. There was a nothing update on Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I think maybe that's because tomorrow as we record this, we're going to see the Ubisoft Forward Showcase and what will be there. And I always expected this would be something that is present there. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but they just reminded people effectively, hey, this game exists. Then they move on to Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga where they announced the Galactic Edition. Not a big deal at all. There's going to be 13 character packs. One of the character packs that they announced had Reva in it from the new Obi-Wan show. They didn't have, for all LEGO Star Wars did right, you know, you had variations of all the characters. I thought they would have a Obi-Wan variation. They had Cassie and Andor, of course, for the upcoming show that's releasing very soon. So when I'm watching this, I'm thinking, what's with the misguided direction? Like, even the character packs don't seem that great. Then, shout out to one of my editors, Locke Moore, a good friend of mine. He's always on my back, Matty. You got to cover Return to Monkey Island over on Retro Rebound. We got another update on it. It's coming out September 19th. Does look like a funny game. Definitely way before my time, but I'm not going to disrespect this one from one of the goats. Afterwards was what I call a respect announcement. Like it happened and I went, all right, I, I don't know what this is, but I respect that you did it. So they were talking in the showcase about how they were reviving a lot of old games like Aladdin, the 2D side-scroller, and Lion King, etc., etc. And so they talk about next Gargoyles Remastered. Never heard of this one. Don't know much about it. Game looks solid enough. It's one of those announcements I just respect because, oh, you took this thing that wasn't super popular, wasn't super well-known, at least to my knowledge, and you decided to revive it and give it some attention on your showcase. That's cool. I love when big companies take chances because I think they should be the biggest risk takers because they have the least to lose. Meanwhile, it's actually the indies who are carving the industry into all new directions. And then the AAA steps in and goes, oh, hey, that was a great idea. Let's do that with more money, though. I understand why you got to be safe as a business, but I respect when they take a, I would say, educated risk, such as Gargoyles Remaster. Continuing on, this was one of those games that really looked like it was going to be a different one, an interesting one. I was getting Shrek 2 vibes. I was getting Marvel Ultimate Alliance vibes. And it's Disney Mirrorverse, which looked to be this villains-focused, maybe horde mode game, action RPG. I don't know. I could have been about it. But then at the end, mobile. You just know right then and there, things are going to be limited. And this is where the show goes off the rails because we still have a series of mobile games to go through. You know, we just got Red Hulk and Strike Force. We got Marvel Snap. At this point, you're like, okay, all right, fine. Then you get Mirrorverse and you're just leaning back in your chair thinking, wow, they're really going all in. And to know that there is, according to my list here, two more, it's a lot of mobile games for one stream, even if this stream was only 23 minutes. 
So continuing on, a new announcement that looks good, but I feel a little uneasy about it, is Disney Speedstorm. So this is a kart racer that the gameplay didn't look that solid, like the physics for the cars look very rigid. And after Chocobo GP, any free-to-play kart racer, sorry, no. I don't give Nintendo a lot of respect, as many of you know, but I respect Mario Kart. That game feels incredible. It is one of the goats for a reason. It's hard to top for a reason. So seeing Disney Speedstorm as a free-to-play game does not put me at ease. I was really, I was saying on the show when I was streaming it, please be a premium game that we can pay for because at least there's a chance there that you're going to do something with the title that doesn't involve milking the brand. But that's not going to be the case here. So again, not holding my breath on Disney Speedstorm, even if I like the concept because the maps looked pretty cool. I feel like Disney as a whole entire brand can be explored endlessly in a game like this, in a Smash type game as well. I just feel like there's so much room for potential, but free to play ain't it. Afterwards, a new free to play game got an update coming this fall. It's Disney Dreamlight Valley. I've been playing this on Game Pass, I'm not gonna front. Game's actually pretty cool. Not an Animal Crossing guy, but there's something kind of zen about this game. It's good busy work if you're like sitting in a Discord call and you just want to shut off your brain and talk with the boys, talk with the gals, and just play something kind of fun and cute. This game is solid, I will say. And if you're a Game Pass user, you get the Founders Pack for free, so you get some bonus items to start off. But they announced that coming this fall is going to be the Toy Story Pack. And this feels like an almost reinvention of Disney Infinity, so I'm here for the ride. I definitely want to monitor this one. But I was happy to see that game felt like it was missing something. This was certainly it. I love Toy Story. It's one of my favorite Disney properties, so I was happy to see that. All right, back to mobile now. The, the fun is over. We have Avatar Reckoning. What's with this Avatar push all of a sudden? I know we have the sequel movie coming out finally, but I mean, really, I, I, I feel like it was a lightning in a bottle moment. I am not one of those people who goes and hates Avatar now. I see a lot of that on the internet. I don't get it. I respect what it did, but it did feel like a lightning in a bottle moment. We're at such a point now with cinematography and fidelity that I don't know if another Avatar moment will happen again with the way it impressed people in theaters where just it was a visual experience. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I don't know if it's going to shake the earth again like it once did. At least I don't have that personal belief, but it seems other execs do. And they're doing, of course, Frontiers of Pandora with Ubisoft. They're also doing Reckoning, which is this third person, first person shooter type game with single player missions. It's weird. Everything about it was speaking like a console game. And they're like, it's coming to your mobile devices. Why? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Why Disney? Why Marvel? Why Lucasfilms? Why everyone? Why are we doing this? I don't know. But any interest in the game was lost. Fortunately, Amy Hennig's studio over at Skydance was there to pick me up while I was feeling down. They didn't put a name on this game, but they revealed their Marvel game that they announced earlier on a piece of paper this year. It is going to be a Captain America Black Panther game. It said four heroes, two worlds, one war. Really interested to see where this one goes. You saw France in the trailer. There's a lot of intrigue around this game and understandably so. Knowing the minds behind it, the studio behind it, now the concept. Absolutely one that I'm going to be very straightforward with. I will forget about, and when it gets re-revealed with actual gameplay, I'll be happy with. That was the other Achilles heel I'd like to get into with this showcase, is that, you know, this, this there's a lot of CG. You know, too much, even. I, I was just not pleased with things. Now, of course, the expectation, Spider-Man 2, Wolverine, a slim, like, 2% chance KOTOR remake makes an appearance respawns first person shooter in the star wars universe i don't know in some weird way battlefront 3 gets a title card reveal you'd think the final announcement of the show would be any number of games that we know exist or could exist oh, i'm sorry ubisoft star wars game maybe they're holding that for their own showcase again there's so many things to pick from what is the final announcement of the show marvel world of heroes from niantic which again is going to be this Pokemon Go style game. Pokemon Go was 2016 and I know that it's popular. I'm not going to disrespect it. I love that game when it came out. And I'm not saying it's a bad choice that they make it. I'm trying to be objective here. But good God almighty to end your show on it. Come on now. Let's use a little self-awareness here. So overall, there were some minor bright spots to me. The biggest one was Marvel Midnight Suns coming out this year. Love to see that, especially next-gen only. I'm loving seeing developers prioritize that hardware. 
you know, we just saw it with CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk 2077, but mobile, 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 free to play, free to play, free to play, minor updates for everything that Disney has loaded in the chamber. I'm very surprised how weak this ended up being, but that's everything that was at this showcase. So I leave it in your hands now. What do you think of all you saw when it came to the Disney Marvel Games Showcase, whether it be here in this video or you watched it live with me or you watched it separately? What are your thoughts? Please do fire away. And with that, take excellent care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.